Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Maddie and I talk about books. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing my 2019 favorites. And before you're like, we're like a whole week in 2020, why are you being so late? Um, I've had laryngitis for like the past week. I've been very sick for the past like week and a half. Um, and I've, this is the best that I've sounded. So I figured I just wait it out get to it eventually um so here we're you know what five days five days into the, the new year and here are my favorites and that's my cat jumping off the bed um okay so um let's just get started so i'm only gonna do my five favorites of 2019 basically um i get kind of bored with videos that just list like 15 favorites of the year i'm never gonna remember those so I kind of didn't want to make that video. Um, also, I only read 56 books and I think five favorites out of 56. That's a very large percentage already. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, first up, my number one, my number five favorite book. These are in a particular order, to be fair. Like this is my fifth favorite book of the year was The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Um, this is a murder mystery book. You know who gets murdered, like, right away. Obviously, you almost always do in a murder mystery. But what's really interesting about this book, and different from any other kind of murder mystery books I've read, is the protagonist changes bodies every night. So every day he relives it. He relives the day of the murder every day. And he wakes up in a different body. And he has, I think eight days to solve the mystery of who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. Um, I did not see the twist coming. I couldn't put this book down. It was super fun and just super different. Um, so if you're looking kind of for something suspenseful, oh my gosh, my cat is here um, looking out the window, wondering what I'm doing. If you're looking for something suspenseful, but kind of different than a typical whodunit, or if you just hunt knives out and you're like, I'm the mood, which is what happened to me, I would recommend. I really enjoyed this. So for number two, I don't have a physical copy of it. I just read it on my iPad and my phone. So The City of Brass by S.A. Chakrabody, Bordy, Chakrabordy. Um, super good. Really like this whole series that I've read so far. I think there's two books and the third one comes out next year. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's definitely like a magical realism. No, it's definitely just like a fantasy book, but it's set with like gin um, and like very Middle Eastern lore, which is something that I didn't, I don't read a lot of books like that. Um, and I thought it was really well done. I really love the main character, Nari. It's just really fun um, and romantic and beautiful. And yeah, really great time. So my... And so now on to my third favorite book. Did I say the last one my second favorite? So on to my third favorite book of the year. Um, this is this book did not come out last year or even by the year prior. I think this book's kind of old. But again, um, I read this. I actually do. <laughs> I do have the physical copy of this one. So I don't know where it is. So we're just going to. Look at this cover, A Darker Shade of Magic by P.E. Schwab. Um, this book has been out for a while. I don't have a lot to say that's like new on it. Um, I just, what can I say? I love parallel worlds. I love them. I love a fantasy jumping between worlds kind of book. It's a trope, but it's one that I really enjoy. Now on to my second favorite book of the year. This, um, this author is probably my favorite author, like one of my favorite authors of all time. I've read everything by her. I forever stand. Queen of nothing. We all loved it, didn't we? I mean, I actually think this one was maybe people's least favorite. For me, this was probably my favorite of the series. Cruel Prince was actually my least favorite. I'm really surprised that I kept going with the series after that book. Um, and thought Wicked King was good, but Queen of Nothing, man, top notch. 
really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of fun. I, love, I actually finally liked Jude. Wasn't a huge Jude fan. Um, love Cardin. Cardin forever. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I think it was really well done. You know, like you knew that she was going to pardon herself and that she could have done that the whole time, but you were like, when's it going to happen? Oh my God. So, great time. Loved it. Highly recommend. Yeah, second favorite book of the year. And now, truly, like, this, this book, not only is this book, this last book, my favorite of the year, but it's probably one of my favorites of all time. Um, again, an author who, she's only come out with two books. Loved both of them. I would call, say her first book was one of my favorites of all time, too. I knew when I heard this one was coming out, I freaked out. So excited. You know, it's got a really convoluted plot, but it's also perfect. Like, I love a story about stories. And there's not a lot of them that I found. Um, this was. So, without further ado, my favorite book of 2019, The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Um, this book, I mean, it's beautiful. Look at it. Like, I don't own a lot of books, and I actually read this on an ebook, but then I was like, I have to own it. And it's signed. Um, but I mean, look at, look at that. Look at that inner cover. Like, look at this book. It's just so pretty. I couldn't not buy it. I mean, the inner cover, who could even? So, if you live under a rock and you don't know Aaron Morgenstern and you don't know The Starless Sea, it's a book. Really, it's a story about stories. Um, it follows as Zachary Ezra Rollins um, as he kind of discovers this underground world of libraries which <laughs> kill me can i live there oh my god um and it's kind of dangerous and there's like people who don't want anyone to know about this world and so they're burning all the doors to the world there's always like secret doors um and you know there's character mirabelle and she's very mysterious but like very cool and she has pink hair and um you have like the the keeper i think is what he is he's like the library man um and it just kind of plays with time it plays with your idea of like space um and you know zachary's your hero but he's not that much of a hero you know he prefers to like read about the story rather than like lead the story in a lot of ways um yeah, it's just so good. I couldn't put this book down. It's magical. The prose, Aaron Morgenstern writes some of the most beautiful prose, like, ever, I that I've ever read. Um, her world building, her descriptions, her set, like, I'm not a big prose person. I very much care about the plot. I mean, my second favorite book was Claude Black's Queen of Nothing, which isn't, like, the most amazingly well-written book ever. It's just, like, a great plot. Um, but this is something else. Um, I highly recommend you pick up this book as well as her first book, The Night Circus, which has been out for years. So if you haven't read that, you're really, really missing out. Um, yeah, I just can't recommend this book enough. I think if you like fantasy, if you like world, if you like to talk your shade of magic, you're gonna love this. Again, like I said, I love a secret world. I love a hidden world. Um, I think a lot of these books include like multiple worlds these are all very similar um yeah so that's my video my voice is giving out so happy 2020 everyone we made it new decade um i'm gonna try and get this video up like today or tomorrow because it's been late enough as it is um yeah, so anyway, I'm also currently participating in Smutathon by accident. Um, I just happened to be reading a Smutty book on the first day, and I was like, why not? So I think my next video will just be a vlog of me reading Smut. 
Anyway, talk to y'all later. Bye.